Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you the cheapest and easiest way that I've found to add an amplifier and a subwoofer to your vehicle's factory stereo without using one of those more expensive audio interfaces. Come with us. Okay, so before we get into it, here's a quick rundown of the things that you'll need. Starting with kind of the star of the show, the Metra Line Out Converter. This actually allows you to send audio to an external amplifier via the speaker wires from your factory radio. About 20 feet of speaker wire, 15 feet of power wire, a varying length of ground wire, an inline fuse holder, and then various connectors. And then, obviously, an amplifier and a subwoofer. In this case, we're going to be installing another TBX 10A. I mean, $39, you can't beat it. You're also going to want to pick up an amp kit like this. And uh, depending on how your terminals for your battery connect, you might want to get one of these battery terminal connectors too. But as you can see on this one, um, we don't really have the battery accessible. So what I'm going to do is take from this little power point right here. And uh, as you can see, I've already got my power wire ran and uh, I noticed if you look down uh, towards the pack kick panel back behind the brake master cylinder right there I noticed there was a little uh, kind of access panel so here's a better shot from the front or uh, from the kick panel from the passenger or excuse me from the driver side and uh, that had a little flap in it that you can actually remove and what I did was I just drilled a hole into that as you can see here and uh, that allows me to put the wire through it and then uh, actually just kind of put it back in. Uh, I put it back in from the inside, as you can see here, and uh, that seemed to work out really well. And basically just run it all under the trim nice and easy. All of this trim pops out very easily, so it makes it nice and easy to run the smaller gauge wire back there. Now getting down to the ground, we're going to be using this nut from the seat post. To properly get at it, I took one of these ring terminals that fit a 10 to 12 gauge uh, wire and split it so it opened up. Now we can just remove the nut, easy as pie. But what you want to do is you want to scuff up the area and try to get as much paint off to get as well of a connection as you can get. Also follow suit with the nut like you can see. And then with it split like that, it actually was able to make it onto the stud. I actually got that running all the way back to where the amp is going to go. But what we want to do is we want to tap into these rear door speakers. Now, I'm pretty sure I already know what the color for the speakers are, but I want to make sure. So first what I'm going to do is take this door panel off. But in the meantime, I want to show you where I'm actually going to connect our line out converter into the speaker wires. So I've already kind of, uh, there's four clips on uh, this little panel here and I've already taken apart just to make it easier the harness that goes through which feeds all of the circuits to the door but we want to know which ones exactly run the speakers I have a wiring diagram but I'm not sure that they're the exact ones so what we need to take off this door with any door that you want to take off this is a very good tip make sure you watch this there's always two places that it's secured. One inside of the handle, which you know you use to pull shut, and then the handle, the second one is in the handle that you know you use to open the door. Looks like this one's a P2 Phillips and then a number 10 uh hex fastener. And then down there is a number is a T30 uh fastener. And to get these off, there's always a cover. You might look there and be like, well, no, there's nothing there. Well, there's a little cover that you can kind of just take a screwdriver. The cover's not here now, but um, you can pop them off. There will be one down there as well. So kind of to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just pop this off real quick. Literally, I should. Oh, the right way. So we got that. I'm trying to do this without getting a tripod. So there's those two. We'll go ahead and grab that. Then we got the T30 down here. Now we can actually see for certain, this stuff is very hard to do one-handed. Okay, 
So definitely, it's the greens. All right, so we checked that out, but if you ever want to make sure that you know what your polarity is, again, grab a battery, and I have the two green wires back probed, and if it is correct to what I think, one to one side, oh, yep, it's working, and then one to the other, and then remember the speaker should jump towards you. Don't know if you can see that, but it's jumping towards us. That means that the one on the right is the positive and then the one on the left is the negative. But now why I did that is because the wires actually, the colors change from this connector to this connector. This one, it's a dark gray and green and a dark gray and a light blue. So uh, just by kind of mirroring them, you can tell, you know, which actually one you want to dig into or you want to connect into. We're going to connect in on this side so we're not running a wire, you know, through the door. That's tricky and you don't want to do that. That just messes everything up. Well, all right. I've got the panel completely off. I've figured out which is which. Dark is positive and then the one with the lighter tracer is negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slit back the uh, insulation on both of these wires and then we're going to take our speaker wires connect them to there uh, solder them and then put some liquid electrical tape and then tape everything back up and then pretty much do the same thing on the other side so there we go just going to be something like that yep uh, you can get connectors that will actually you know connect wires like that without stripping them i'm not a big fan of them but uh, i'm going to solder those and then throw some tape around them. I don't think I'm gonna do any liquid electrical, but yep, that's how you hook up your inputs for uh, your line out converter. Well, that's it all soldered and taped up. Like I said, that's just gonna kind of sit flat there. What I did was I actually moved the power wire way down kind of under the carpet, and I'm gonna run this uh, line level, uh, the one going to the line out converter, uh, kind of closer to this over here and then maybe shoot it in at a different uh, point before the power goes over just to kind of separate it as much as possible from that power. Well, all right, got it all back together. And then just, yep, kind of pop this back on there. I think I'm going to have it kind of pop out just straight up under the seat. You'll see it a little bit right there, but I don't think it'll get in the way or mess with anything too bad. And then back on the door panel, uh, usually most doors nowadays are mostly like this. Uh, I took off the two main points uh, that were secured. And then as you see, there's a bunch of these little white things. And these actually have these little rivets that go in there. Nowadays, the, the doors aren't like they used to be. They used to be like you, they come off once and then that's it. They're always horrible. Nowadays, they've made it a lot better. But... So this is for the door handle. You just press these two little tab wings in and then you can pull it out. And then the rest, like I said, are just regular connectors. Remember, anytime you see a little red thing, you always got to pull it back and then you can push it. And then once you put it back in, make sure you push that little, a little red thing back in there. Okay, so we've got our speaker wires coming from our speakers. We've got everything pretty much right here yeah so i'm pretty much crimping everything just using these regular buck connectors this is the ground this is what i took and expanded so it can fit on the bolt down there for the seat uh gonna hook that up and then pretty much connect everything and then i will explain what is connected to what instead of you know doing it uh all in real time i think it'd be a lot easier to explain once i do it all but pretty much the sub's going to sit right here, you know, so the harness is going to be somewhere around there. And uh, the line out converter I can put anywhere because this actually has a remote, which uh, via 3.5 connects into the back. So this doesn't matter where this is going to be, but it's going to be relatively close to the harness. Um, kind of wondering about noise interference, but we will see. Uh, so yeah, going to hook up the ground. Going to connect pretty much everything because I do have the speaker wires up here. And uh, then I'll explain more from there. So looking at the directions, I got everything all connected. So what this line out converter does is you'll notice I have a power and ground running 
like I have said before, this is a dual TBX uh, style connector that goes into a dual TBX. Every single one of these wires, there's a pair of them, uh, minus the RCAs, are pretty much just bridged inside the amp, so they connect. So I have my power coming in, I have my ground coming in. Uh, the ground is down there. That actually worked out pretty well. So this needs power. And the way that it works, uh, how any amplifier works, is they always have a constant power and ground, and they need a third 12 volt uh, reference, which is a remote, which when that turns on, that turns on the amplifier, meaning you don't want your amplifier to stay on when you turn your car off, you know, and you're not using it. So what this does is this senses input from your speakers then it turns this on, which will turn your amp on. It also brings the audio from your speakers, which allows you to hook up RCAs to your amplifier. So again, power, pretty isolated out of the way. Got our ground down there. Got that going for us. We have our RCAs right here. Gonna be nice and close. And then we have our left channel and our right channel, as well as power coming from the main power going to the line out converter, and then the remote going back out. Definitely go out and get yourself one of these crimping tools. I like the one with the crimper at the end, but uh, as far as these, this is a Dorman brand, and uh, being an auto technician, I usually don't like to buy Dorman if I can't, but uh, these, uh, the cutter, the stripper part of these are horrible, but the crimper part works really well. The only thing we have to do now is uh, go back up front, and I always like to do this last, but uh, we're gonna hook up the inline fuse to our power supply that I showed you in the very beginning. Okay, so about $10 from Walmart. I didn't realize this is an ATM style, which is the really mini fuse, but um, this didn't come with a fuse inline fuse holder i guess that's it so i went up to o'reilly got this one from a little fuse brand pretty good i've worked with them before and uh, it comes with a fuse so that was weird what happened there so yeah this one actually comes with a fuse so i'm gonna hook that up to as you can see i got the power wire here it's gonna be connecting to there but i'm gonna take one of these butt connectors and hook that up first All right, there we go. I'm gonna throw some tape around that, tape around that. Uh, yeah, speaking of tape, you're gonna wanna tape all of the connections uh, just to get a better bond and uh, prevent corrosion, especially up here. But yep, so what I'm gonna do is find the right socket for that and then hook this up and then uh, kind of route it a little bit better if I can. All right, so here we go. As at least obtrusive as we can be. Got that ran pretty much all the way out of the way, going in through the firewall. What I did, I have everything all hooked up. We have our RCAs ran, power ground, everything as we can see, it's off. We'll wait for the uh, radio to come on. App and use promo code DOLLAR for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code DOLLAR. Hey, it turned it on. It's working. And guess what? You could be there live in Las Vegas. All right. Got it all tuned up, sounds really good. I'm gonna hide all of this. Uh, let me turn that off. We got it all dialed in, it sounds really good. I'm actually gonna do a sound test for you here in a second. I'm thinking about setting up the actual microphone out here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. It might be dark out by the time I get to it, but we'll have some lights on in here. So uh, yeah, now this has a control knob that I'm gonna mount and kind of run up there for, so she can, you know, kind of turn it up and down as she feels, but, 
for the rest of this, like I said, tape all of this up. Make sure, you know, you want to make sure all your connections are good and tight. Uh, you can spray some stuff down there on that ground because uh, if you couldn't tell, kids reside back here and there's a bunch of spills. So, um, yeah, even up in the uh, under the engine compartment for your positive wire, go ahead and spray some battery terminal protector on that. That'll help out loads. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna clean all this up and, uh, and do a proper sound test for the old duel. Well, okay, I actually got the mic hooked up, got everything all set up. The vehicle's running right now and I'm not hearing any noise through anything in the system. It's dead silent. So we've got Hustlin' from Nefix queued up. Got it at about half volume. Maybe I'll go ahead and turn it up. It's almost all the way up. Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain. I know it's tough and I know there's pain. But hitting bottom is the only way to change. So I'll keep hustling, you keep struggling. Bitch, I'm humbling, keep mumbling. I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing. You've got nothing, I'll keep hustling. It always does that. Yep, vehicle's still running. Sounds awesome.